Are you tossing and turning at night, unable to get a restful night of sleep? Maybe you have difficulty falling asleep, or maybe you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep. No matter what the scenario is for you, you are experiencing difficulties with your sleep and you feel like there might be correlation with the stubborn midsection weight gain and this difficulty sleeping. If this sounds familiar, if you have questions about this, I need you to stay tuned for today's episode because I'm gonna unravel this for you today. I'm gonna explain to you the connection between poor sleep and weight gain, and I'm going to give you three tips you can start to implement tonight in order to improve the quality of your sleep. And as a result, begin to see changes in your waistline. If you're frustrated by sudden weight gain, low energy, bloating, irritability, poor sleep and brain fog since you hit your 40s, this podcast is for you. Join me as we uncover the root cause of your midlife challenges and provide solutions tailored to your over 40 body. Hi, I'm Lara Frenchin and I'm dedicated to helping women over 40 thrive by teaching them how to eat, move and care for their bodies. As a former corporate controller turned holistic nutritionist, I feel called to support women as they transition into peri and postmenopause. I don't want another woman to struggle or feel overwhelmed by the changes she's experiencing since hitting her 40s the way that I did. Say goodbye to trying all the things and hello to mastering your metabolism after 40. Did you know that I have a program specifically designed to help women over 40 shed weight without dieting? It's a systematic approach to help you boost your metabolic fire by addressing hormonal imbalances, nutrient deficiencies, as well as metabolic disorders that you might be experiencing. If you're tired of feeling bloated, gaining weight, struggling with sleep and low energy, this program is for you. I highly encourage you to go to the show notes, click on the link to schedule a completely complimentary call, and we can determine if we're well suited to work together. Let me help you move from a place of feeling like a heavy and tired midlifer to a thriving and fierce femme. I remember a few years back when I was really struggling with my sleep. Some nights I'd have difficulty falling asleep, but most predominantly for me, I'd wake up at about 3 a.m. and I would be tossing and turning and would have real difficulty falling asleep. My mind would be racing and I just, it was just a really frustrating period. I felt like no matter what I did, nothing changed and my sleep didn't improve. And coincidentally, it was around the same time that I started to put on weight. And now I know it's not so coincidental. And I had an inkling back then, and I knew that there was a lot of research connecting poor sleep and weight gain. And that's what I'm gonna unravel for you today. And once I got a handle on my sleep, once I improved the quality of my sleep, I was able to address the weight gain and all of the issues that I was experiencing during that time, but I needed to really address the sleep. So I'm going to share with you, first of all, why you might be experiencing difficulty sleeping, and I'm going to share three takeaways that you can start to implement right away in order to improve the quality of your sleep. Okay, so as you know, one of the reasons that we're experiencing issues with our sleep is because of our hormonal shifts. I have talked about this, right? Our, you know, in perimenopause after 40, our hormones are shifting. Progesterone is on the decline. Estrogen is also on the decline, but in relationship to the progesterone, it is higher. And progesterone is your zen hormone. It's actually the hormone that helps you relax. It's very correlated to good quality sleep. But these fluctuating hormones are causing issues and changes in your hormone profile. All other hormones are impacted by the shift with progesterone and estrogen, and definitely cortisol is impacted. When all of this is happening, cortisol is on the rise. And this erratic cortisol, up and down cortisol, really impacts your sleep because cortisol is supposed to be highest in the morning, and then it's supposed to be on the decline for the rest of the day. Melatonin rises when cortisol declines, and then you're able to sleep and have a really deep, relaxed sleep. Now, when cortisol is erratic, it's pumping all the time, 
and you're waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning, well, it's an indication that cortisol is rising when it shouldn't. And this is the problem. This is why it's such a common issue during this time in perimenopause as well as postmenopause because our body's under so much stress. And the reason why we're seeing this correlation of weight gain when we cannot sleep is partly because of the cortisol issue. I explained it in past episodes, right? And you can go back and listen to those. So cortisol, you end up gaining more weight, you have imbalanced blood sugar, you retain more water, you're more bloated, etc. So cortisol has all of these implications with weight gain, but it's also stealing your sleep. And sleep is a critical element for fat detoxification, fat metabolism, for regeneration of cells, for detoxifying all of the things that we've consumed during the day. You know, even the digestive process has chemical byproducts, which the liver has to detoxify. The food we ingest have has some toxins, right? In last episode, I talked about glyphosate and the chemicals, et cetera, they add to our food. Well, our, our liver should be able to detoxify all of those elements. And a lot of this detoxification work happens when we sleep. So if we're not getting good quality deep sleep, we are naturally going to gain weight because when our liver is detoxifying and if it's not detoxifying well, in order to protect our body, the toxins are held in fat cells and the body won't release these fat cells and release the weight until we're able to really improve our detoxification pathways, eat a lot of antioxidant rich foods, and give our body enough time to rest and sleep. Unless we can do this, our body will not release fat cells because it's protecting our organs. All of these toxins reside in the fat cells, predominantly around this abdominal area. And in order to protect your body from damage by releasing the toxins that are stored in these fat cells, the body won't do that. The body won't release the toxins in order to protect your organs and your internal organs. So in its wisdom, the body holds on to weight. And if you cannot sleep, you won't be able to release them. The other thing that happens is, remember all of our hormones are connected. And when you don't sleep, there's a lot of research supporting this, you end up having leptin, insulin, and ghrelin issues. So leptin resistance sets in, this is your satiety hormone. You will not feel satiated no matter what you eat. Your body produces more ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. I don't know if you've noticed, but when I get poor sleep, when I don't sleep and I had the munchies, have you ever experienced that? You don't sleep well at night and then you're just looking for something. You're looking for munchies during the day. You end up grazing more. Well, this is because your satiety hormones are lower and or your cells are more resistant resistant to your satiety hormones and your hunger hormones are actually increasing. And of course, insulin resistance sets in because if your body is under stress, we're going to ultimately become resistant to the insulin because our body is running on glucose. So there's this complicated process that happens when we don't get good quality sleep. So now let's get into the tips. What can you do? What can you do? When I was going through this, I was like, I just wanna sleep. What can I do in order to improve your, my sleep? So I'm gonna share with you three things that you can start doing today in order to improve the quality of your sleep. My first tip is to reduce electronic usage before bed, at least an hour before bed, possibly possibly even earlier. So this is especially true if you are sensitive to blue light, etc. So definitely get off your phone for the last hour. For some of us, we might even have to use light dimmers. We might have to um, not watch TV and be stimulated for the last hour. I know I'm extremely, or I used to be really extremely sensitive even to watching TV because I would be thinking about it and digesting and dissecting the TV show that I would just watched. So try not to expose yourself to anything that's going to stimulate you. For some of us, it's getting off the news. A lot of us are watching, you know, staying up later and watching the news. And it, that 
Believe it or not, I've recommended particular clients stop watching the news, this negative news. It's, it's really stressful on the body. You might not think it is, but it really does impact us negatively significantly especially if we're sensitive and you know we care about people etc we get really wrapped up in all this stuff so stop watching stuff stop stimulating your brain stop emitting your blue light into your eyes blue light that's emitted from our phone and our electronics our computer our the tv actually stimulates cortisol because it's it emulates daytime um the sun right the the blue light that's emitted during the day in the sun and it's actually very stimulating so instead have a little ritual at night that will calm your nervous system you remember i remember having you know uh, my daughter especially with my first one we developed this little routine for her and we would give her a bath and we would play with her and we'd give her a little stretch and a massage I'd give her her bottle, we'd dim the lights, I'd put her in a rocking chair and rock her. It was this whole rhythm that we had in the evening. And when we didn't go through this rhythm, I would find that she wouldn't sleep well at night. And we're the same. Our bodies like rhythm. Our bodies are used to seasons, right? We have the seasons. We have the calendar year. We have 24-hour clock. Our bodies really enjoy rhythm. So develop a rhythm that works for you, that your body enjoys. I have a rhythm to my evening. It definitely includes staying off devices, staying off my phone, and it includes other things, right? Um, you know, my daughter has a skincare routine that she does, whatever. Whatever your rhythm is, develop something that's really relaxing for you. Maybe put music on, maybe light a candle, maybe put a red light on. I have my red light machine. All of these things really calm your body down and they signal to your body that it's time to sleep and we're going to get ready for bed now. It's not this sudden, okay, work, work, work. I've done all these things and then boom. I'm getting to bed and then my I'm sitting, lying down in bed and my brain is still on, right? So develop a rhythm, stay off your devices for at least an hour. So that's my first tip. My second tip is avoid eating right before bed. We are either digesting, right? We're, are, or detoxifying. That's kind of how I look at it. Our body, because a lot of the organ systems including your liver, are either in, involved in your in doing digestive work or they're doing their detox, detoxification work. So when you go to bed at night with a full stomach, you're not going to, you're going to miss out on the de detoxification work and you're actually going to wake up in the middle of the night and you can't fall asleep. We've all had this experience, right? You have a late dinner, whatever, you whatever you enjoy a lot of food you go to bed and then you wake up in the middle of the night and you break out you know if you feel hot and you're sweating well because your body is doing digestive work and it's actually really stressful on your body to do that in the middle of the night you know in chinese medicine they have like a 24-hour clock each organ system is more active during certain hours in the day and overnight our detoxification pathways are most active and so if our det detoxification pathways cannot kick in and those are doing other work, well, it's going to stress your body out and it's, you're going to wake up and it's just not going to feel right. So I'd say at least three hours before bed, definitely two hours before bed, don't be eating. If you need a little snack, no problem. It's that heavy meal that you should be avoiding. So that's my second tip. Don't eat before bed. And finally, my third one is probably the hardest to adopt. Have a consistent bedtime. Ideally, between 10 and 11, by 10.30, you're sleeping. That is ideal. They've done some research, and this is the best time, especially for women, because if we're not sleeping at a consistent time or if we're not sleeping within this window, it actually causes other hormonal imbalances. Definitely, there's research surrounding staying up late and obesity. Partly, one of the reasons is that when we stay up, we end up eating more. So just turn off your devices, choose a rhythm and stick to it and choose a time to go to bed. So if you're currently sleeping at like 1 a.m., 
It's gonna be really hard for you to sleep at 10.30 p.m. I totally get it. So what you could do is start to scale back slowly, just by half an hour. Every night, just roll it back by half an hour. And then before long, you're gonna be hitting that 10.30, 11 p.m. mark. So those are my three tips. Sleep is critical. I know it's a gong show for many of us during this time, but it doesn't have to be. You can start to implement the tips that I shared today in order to see an improvement in your sleep. And just to recap, those tips include limiting electronic use before bed, avoiding eating before bed, at least give yourself two to three hours, and set a consistent bedtime of at least, you know, between 10 and 11 would be great. I hope you found this helpful. If you need customized support, you know where to find me. Thank you so much for listening. And remember to join me each Wednesday and Friday for a fresh episode of the Master Your Metabolism Over 40 podcast. Are you looking for more resources? Go to nutritionherway.com for free recipes, resources, and a free community you can join today to get weekly tips and recipes sent straight to your inbox. Also, if you found this helpful, I would love it if you would leave a podcast review. It is the number one way you can thank me. Signing off in love and hell.